Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Wednesday, May 31st, Russia was the target of a massive shelling attack that injured four people in Belgorod. According to Belgorod officials, eight apartment buildings, four homes, a school, and two administrative buildings were damaged during the attack. Also on Tuesday night, there was a drone strike in the Krasnodar region. The drone crashed into the Ilsky oil refinery and has started a fire. Both these incidents came one day after a drone attack in Moscow. Although it hasn't been confirmed by the Ukrainian government, Russia is blaming Ukraine for the attacks. The Russian Ministry of Defense said in a statement, quote, All eight aircraft-type unmanned aerial vehicles launched at the Russian capital were destroyed, end quote. The Senate has begun a race to pass a bipartisan agreement that would raise the U.S. debt ceiling after the deal survived a Republican rebellion in the House of Representatives. The bill forged by President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will raise the debt ceiling to $31.4 trillion and would implement new federal spending cuts. On Wednesday night, the House of Representatives voted on the legislation with 314 votes in favor. Full congressional approval is required before June 5th when the Treasury Department could run out of funds to pay its debts for the first time in American history. Should the deal fail, the Treasury may not be able to cover its payments and trigger economic chaos. Netflix started sending out emails to users on Tuesday explaining that anyone sharing their Netflix account login with family members or friends who don't live at the same address will be asked to pay an extra $7.99 a month for each additional person. There will be no penalty for primary account members who are caught sharing their credentials. People who are using an account on the go will need to log in from the primary address once every 31 days to avoid being flagged. Only users who pay for the $15.49 a month standard plan or the $19.99 a month premium plan won't have to pay for additional users. Those with the $9.99 subscription will have no choice but to pay the extra $7.99 for any extra user. Netflix has said that 100 million people around the world use its subscription streaming service without paying for their own accounts. According to new reports from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the number of Americans hospitalized with COVID-19 has fallen nationwide. Marking a record low, preliminary figures from the CDC totaled a little over 8,000 hospitalizations in the past week. This is the first time hospitalizations due to COVID were ever this low. Hospital admissions are one of the few remaining metrics the CDC is relying on to track the spread of the virus and make recommendations. Hospitals will be required to report a list of COVID-19 metrics weekly to the CDC until April 2024. While the state is while the state isn't reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On May 18th, newly released metrics show that over 28,000 molecular tests were conducted and 774 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of May 16th, 169 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 20 are in the ICU. Six new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. COVID-19 boosters are an important tool to keep you healthy. You may still get COVID after getting a booster, but it helps reduce your risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Learn more at mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. Welcome back. Braintree Mayor Charles Kokoris is hosting a community meeting to update Braintree residents on the Clean Harbors facility on Monday, June 5th at 7.30 p.m. in the East Middle School Auditorium. In a statement, the mayor said, quote, I believe it is essential to keep residents informed and I want to ensure the public understands what's transpired and has access to state agencies that regulate these operations to address all concerns for public health and safety, end quote. 
Clean Harbor staff will be in attendance to give an update on the facility fire and there will be an opportunity for the public to ask questions of the pre presenting panel. For additional information, please contact the Mayor's Office at 781-794-8100. The Watson Place construction project in Braintree is among a number of projects in Massachusetts to get state funding. Massachusetts recently awarded $246 million in direct subsidies and state and federal housing tax credits to build and preserve nearly 1,600 affordable homes throughout Massachusetts. In Braintree, Watson Place is a new construction project for families that will be built in downtown Braintree, near the Weymouth Landing MBTA stop. When completed, the mixed income project will include 56 total units serving five income bands, including 30 units restricted for families at less than 60% of area median income, and additional units restricted at 110% and 120% of area median income. Watson Place also will be supported by the Town of Braintree by a state MassWorks award and by a congressional earmark for nearby infrastructure improvements. Developer George Clements is completing a purchase and sale agreement with the Boston Archdiocese for the St. Thomas More property. Thomas More Church is 15 acres and is thought to be one of Braintree's last large pieces of land available for development. Clements said zoning for the property would allow the construction of 26 single-family homes. District 2 Town Councilor Joseph Reynolds, who represents the area, will hold a neighborhood meeting at 6.30 p.m. Thursday, June 1st at Town Hall to discuss the possible development of the property. At a previous neighborhood meeting, Reynolds said he would like the town to buy the property, but added there is not enough money in the town's Community Preservation Act fund to do so. The property is currently worth $8 million. On Tuesday, May 30th, the annual Town Council meeting took place at Braintree Town Hall. The meeting gave an overview of the fiscal 2024 town budget, which has been approved. Mayor Kokoris gave some remarks at the meeting. Here's more from the mayor. I'm pleased to present uh, you with a fully funded fiscal year 24 budget, which provides the highest level of services to our residents. The school department is being fully funded with over 50% of our budget allocated to support of our, in support of our schools, and we remain committed to supporting our students and educators. Additionally, uh, I'm delighted to uh, state that the construction of the New South Middle School is progressing on schedule within budget, and it's slated to open this fall. We also have uh, another part of what came from the debt exclusion uh, is four roof replacements. Uh, those roof replacements are going to take <coughs> place this summer, and it'll be Highlands, Hollis, Flaherty, and Liberty that will be done. And I know that you know my boys went to Highlands, and uh, it was constantly leaking, uh, and we had barrels everywhere. So it's going to be really nice to um, have these roofs fixed so that we can, as we work on the insides of these buildings, uh, we can uh, at least know that we're not going to have leakage coming in and destroying things. Uh, we also um, are util utilizing part of our debt exclusion for school security. Uh, it, it's so important in today's world, and uh, we have some great things that are coming down the, the line on, on school security. On Memorial Day, the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office hosted the second annual Flags of Our Families tribute to fallen heroes with a flag installation ceremony in Braintree. Fifty full-size American flags were installed and displayed on the lawn of the Braintree Public Safety Complex, and a ceremony was held to honor the memory of those who have passed and to recognize their sacrifices. The traditional taps melody was played, followed by an address from, the Sher from Sheriff McDermott. The installation of the flags was done in partnership with the Braintree Veterans Services Department, who also provided the flags. On Sunday, the Veterans Service 
Veterans Services Office held a Memorial Day observance at the Garden of Honor located within the Blue Hills Cemetery. Local leaders including Branchy Mayor Charles Gacoris, Massachusetts Senator Walter F. Timulty, Veterans Service Officer Vincent Fountaine, and others gave remarks throughout the ceremony. The South Middle School Chorus was also present to sing renditions of My Country Tis of Thee and the Star Spangled Banner. For the full Memorial Day observance, check out BCAM TV's public channel, Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28, or you can go to youtube.com slash TV. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Take steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA-approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light-colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Karen Reed has been charged with second-degree murder in the death of Boston police officer John O'Keefe in Canton last year. Reed is accused of hitting O'Keefe with her vehicle outside a friend's house in Canton after a night of drinking on January 29, 2022. O'Keefe was found unresponsive in the heavy snow outside the home on Fairview Road the following morning. During Wednesday's hearing, the judge ruled against holding an evidentiary hearing that would have included testimony from witnesses. Attorneys were permitted to discuss cell phone evidence that the defense is seeking from the owner of the home where O'Keefe died and the homeowner's sister-in-law. The judge set the next hearing for July 25th. Federal regulators have ordered the MBTA to revise its plans to improve worker safety, saying track workers are at immediate risk. In a May 19th letter to MBTA General Manager Philip Eng, the Federal Transit Administration rejected a safety work plan the agency submitted on May 5th, calling it insufficient. The agency's plan came in response to an immediate action letter that the FTA issued last month after a series of inspections. In their last letter, the FTA warned that there was substantial risk of a death or injury on the tracks, citing recent incidents and reports of hazardous conditions. FTA officials ordered the MBTA to resubmit a revised plan by June 5th that addresses right-of-way safety issues within the next 60 days. The MBTA's original submission outlined a long-term plan to improve safety for workers and contract contractors on the rail system, with completion dates set for late 2023 and 2024. Police rushed to a home in Bridgewater around 12.30 a.m. on Friday and found Valerie Oakham inside with severe trauma to her head and face. Oakham was rushed to Good Samaritan Medical Center in Brockton, where she was pronounced dead. Plymouth County District Attorney Timothy Cruz said the suspect, 69-year-old Dennis Marrera of Bridgewater, pleaded not guilty to a charge that he bludgeoned his neighbor to death. Prosecutors said in court that Oakham had visited the suspect's home to have a glass of wine on Thursday night when she was viciously attacked. Prosecutors said Marrera called his son and his son called the police. When police arrived, they said he was covered in blood and Oakham was inside the suspect's kitchen with severe trauma to her head. Marrera was ordered to have a mental evaluation conducted at Bridgewater Hospital. He is scheduled to return to court on June 14th. A Quincy man is one of two men facing multiple charges after three kilograms of cocaine mailed from Puerto Rico was intercepted by authorities. Massachusetts State Police Troopers and U.S. Postal Inspectors found the cocaine last Friday morning when they executed a search warrant on a parcel after it was delivered to 35-year-old Stephen Marsden. Soon after his arrest, state police detectives with the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office obtained search warrants for Marsden's Quincy apartment and his vehicle. In addition, Norfolk County detectives also obtained a search warrant for the home of 41-year-old Evans Klimovich in Worcester, whom police said is a co-conspirator of Marsden's. The search of Marsden's apartment yielded five firearms, 143 loose rounds of ammunition, 
dozens of THC edible packages, approximately 80 Xanax pills, a money counting device, and materials used in the packaging of narcotics, according to the state police. Marsden was being held on $50,000 cash bail pending his arraignment in Quincy District Court. Some events are coming up in Quincy this weekend as a flag-raising ceremony and festival will open Pride Month in the city. The United First Parish Church in Quincy Center will hold a flag-raising ceremony at 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 1st. Special Events Coordinator for the City, John McDonald, said the flag-raising was received warmly last year and the committee has worked with local companies to hang the flag. Then on Sunday, June 4th, the 6th Annual Q Pride Day Festival will be held from noon until 5 p.m. in Kilroy Square. The festival will include food trucks, games for kids, vendors, and performances from special guests like drag performer Randy Roberts. For more information, visit QuincyPride.com. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Did you know your teenager's brain is more likely to get addicted to nicotine than yours? The tobacco and vaping industries do. They target teens with their products and try to cover up the fact that there's nicotine in them. Talk with your kids about the real dangers of vaping. Welcome back to Brand You Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First up in entertainment, in honor of the legendary rock and roll singer Tina Turner's passing, the film Tina is a revealing and intimate look at the life of Tina Turner. The film charts Turner's improbable rise to early fame, her personal and professional struggles throughout her life, and her resurgence as a global phenomenon in the early 1980s. You can watch Tina now on Hulu. Next up in entertainment, The Little Mermaid follows the youngest of King Triton's daughters, Ariel. Ariel is a beautiful and spirited young mermaid with a thirst for adventure. Longing to find out more about the world beyond the sea, Ariel visits the surface and falls for the dashing Prince Eric. Following her heart, she makes a deal with the evil sea witch Ursula to experience life on land. The film is directed by Rob Marshall and stars Halle Bailey, and you can watch The Little Mermaid now only in theaters. Finally in entertainment, Fast X is the 10th film in the Fast and Furious saga. The film launches the final chapters of one of cinema's most storied and popular global franchises. Fast X follows Dom Toretto and his family who have outsmarted and outdriven every foe in their path. Now they must confront the most lethal opponent, opponent they've ever faced. Fueled by revenge, a terrifying threat emerges from the shadows of the past to shatter Dom's world and destroy everything and everyone he loves. You can watch Fast X now only in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides and thank you for watching Branchy Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.